It's not as clear as it seems when looking at the newest Hu Tao and Staff of Homa banners, and this is the best time to review the whole situation. You know there's a lot of buzz going on when both the character and weapon banners are getting discussed at the same time. Now, besides the fact the exact same reaction literally happened the last time when Hu Tao showed up back in 1.3 update, we gotta be honest here and admit the stakes are a little bit higher this time around. And it's not just the fact we're probably getting a live stream in the next week where we get to hear the news and hopefully learn more about the 2.3 character banners, but also at the same time the majority of you watching this and even Genshin's overall player base in general are getting to the point where a lot of characters are already unlocked, so the idea of weapon banners or even extra constellations are starting to get rationalized, which we'll get into more of it later in the video. But first, if we look at Hu Tao's banner, it's great to see Diona making a comeback because if you watched the previous video, then you know there's a strong team comp that you can use when it comes to Hu Tao and Diona, and it's all about causing those melt, freeze, and vaporize reactions. She's basically there in place of Zhong Li if you don't have him or using another team, and even though her healing and weaker shield can downplay on Hu Tao's whole shtick with walking the line between dying and causing a lot of damage from missing health, she is still a great support you can rely on and also works with many other teams in the game. And as for Toma and Sayu, well, the housekeeper will get fully reviewed when the time comes, since there's not much you can say about him at this point, and as for Sayu, she's an interesting character with a lot of flexible builds, but you definitely want to prioritize someone who can at least provide a decent shield for Hu Tao, so she can utilize her talents effectively when in low health. But the thing is, is, most of you already made up your mind when it was just Hu Tao and Toma previewed, and even though things could have gotten more wild if Mihoyo had decided to add Xing Cho or Bennett into this banner, the real interesting situation we wound up in is the Staff of Homa weapon banner and the things you'll be hearing in the few coming weeks. Looking at the weapons banner, it's pretty clear there's a lot of value to be found in it, but you know it, I know it, and everyone else knows it. The biggest motivator is going to be Staff of Homa. And the problem here is that while you're keeping your eyes on the prize, unless you're absolutely ready to commit and go for the pity, which is around 200 to 210 wishes, give or take, chances are you're going to end up with quite a few other weapons in your inventory. This obviously isn't a bad thing, and in fact, considering the other weapons you might obtain gives you a better perspective on whether or not you should be wishing on the banner, like one of the possibilities being you get the elegy for the end before the staff itself. Now, when this bow had its first run, its banner was considered to be one of the worst in terms of power, and only whale players entertained the idea of it, but after 1.6 update where elemental mastery got buffed, and then later on, fate point system was introduced, the outlook has definitely changed. So if you're primarily concerned what would happen if you get this weapon when you're mainly interested in using Hu Tao team comps, then it's actually a pretty awesome equipment choice for either Amber or support Ganyu. It's probably weird to hear Amber pop up in here, but she's quite a decent teammate you can use together with Hu Tao when utilizing another animal character along with Xing Cho, and since Elegy gives a chunky boost to Elemental Mastery, you can expect to give a sizable improvement to Hu Tao's vaporized reactions after activating Amber's Burst. And as for support Ganyu, well, the two words by themselves already give off a premium feeling, so if you like the idea of using Ganyu's skill and burst instead of grenade launching her powerful charge shots, she is quite the powerful addition to Team Hu Tao, and that Elegy only makes Hu Tao's melts hit for even more damage. Also, let's not forget that this bow is basically Venti's best in slot choice, but what's even more surprising is that Kujo Sara has good synergy with it because her burst cooldown matches up with weapon's passive and helps provide additional buffs on top of her already strong attack boost, and there's the energy recharge substat she can utilize for her expensive burst. But let's move on from all of this gushing about a zero to hero support bow and focus on the next big consideration, which is of course the Sacrificial Sword, since it gives the much needed damage and energy generation for Xing Cho, although there are alternative options of running high energy recharge build by utilizing the newest Emblem of Severed Fates set, but it falls prey to artifact randomness and the fact a lot of other characters are competing for these set pieces, so Sacrificial Sword, especially with additional refinements, is just an easier option when building Xing Cho. And as for the remaining weapons, Woodsith is basically the best catalyst you can get for Mona and helps you achieve those 
these beautiful damage per screenshot bragging rights. Although, what you're also probably wondering about are the two newest 4-star weapons that will be debuting in this banner, and well, both of these weapon passives gives a boost to the wielder's burst, and while that's exciting, the caveat of high energy teams to utilize this boost only limits team variations, not to mention most of the bulk characters like Yoimiya, Diona, and Fischl, and few others don't really depend on burst damage that much, while polearm users value critical rate, damage, and energy recharge from the substat, and in fact, you could argue that the fully refined catch gets the job done way better thanks to its simple boosts you can utilize. Finally, when we take a look at Rain Slasher, there's really no one else besides maybe Vaporize Diluc and Sayu that can take advantage of the passive, but it's just not the same as you would assume with Dragon's Bane, where a hyper-specialized weapon provides significant damage performance and Rain Slasher instead remains to be a niche Claymore that you're better off not investing into, unless some new character comes out that can synergize extremely well with it, just like it was with Iron Sting before Kazuha came along. Overall, out of the 7 weapons in this banner, 4 of them are really good, especially if you want to build a strong Hu Tao team, but the overall variety aside from one not so great weapon is quite surprising and truly makes this banner a worthwhile consideration if you're finally thinking about getting some new equipment instead of new characters. And as crazy as that last sentence sounded, we need to talk about this in the next part. We could keep considering pros and cons of weapons and characters all day long, but one thing that doesn't get often discussed in Genshin community are the actual player motivations. No matter how you look at it, most people decide to wish on something with a goal in mind. Maybe you're trying to get lucky with those remaining primo gems, or you're set on obtaining a character with a massive reserve you've been saving up, but the problem here is that you rarely hear this line of thinking about weapons. Like seriously, when was the last time you heard somebody say they're saving up for a weapon? Well the thing is, weapons do get discussed from time to time, but the magnitude is just so many times smaller when compared to a featured character, and that's because the biggest difference between the two is that a new character or constellation offers a richer experience in general, like world exploration, more different teams you can build, and just the fact you get to play and learn the new character, while weapons are usually there to just improve your team's overall performance. Obviously, some weapons can help with unlocking a new character build, but at the end of the day, it's just not the same as getting a new character or their constellation installation in terms of gameplay experience. Now, is this a bad thing? Not really, it just depends on what are your expectations from this game. This is really something that's been obvious since Genshin's launch, but 5-star weapons and some 4-star gacha weapons simply make your team stronger, and now that we're seeing Staff of Homa making a return, with a highly specialized set of weapons like Sacrificial Sword, Elegy for the End, and Witsith, it's easy to look at it as a way to build one or two powerful Hu Tao team variations. In fact, the Staff itself itself is basically an upgrade to most of the polearm characters, while Elegy could just be slapped on Venti if you have him and call it a day, and there's obviously so many players out there who use Xing Cho for just about any comp, so if you're missing out on that sacrificial sword or extra refinements, you might consider dabbling in the weapon banner. So it's best to look at Staff of Home banner as an exclusive way to just boost your account's overall strength by obtaining powerful weapons, while the character's banner is there to just provide you a unique experience, and if you go for extra extra constellations, you're also looking at a way to make them stronger or perhaps unlock some new mechanics or builds. It's also important to note that we do get a quaint fates from time to time and it's possible to just get a good 5 star like Wolf's Gravestone from the standard banner, while when you wish on a weapon banner, there's also that slight chance you might get a 4 star character from the standard pool. But basically, not all weapon banners are going to be valuable when we talk about from the perspective of low spending or free to play player, but this one is a pretty good exception if you're thinking thinking about getting some great featured weapons, not just Staff of Homa. Just keep in mind the whole thing between having more gameplay variety when wishing on a character banner versus focusing on decking out your existing team with stronger weapon options. One last thing that's pretty crucial to consider is the nature of unpredictability. A lot of you mentioned in the comments a good point, that the weapon banner isn't really that interesting if it don't have Hu Tao unlocked, so if it happens that you get her without overspending too much primos, you might be tempted to go for the Staff of Homeless banner. Well, the problem here is that the design of Fate Point system only guarantees the weapon you charted the course for within 210 wishes on average, and that's nothing to scoff at, even if you've been saving up for a while now. Obviously, there's some great 
great weapons for other characters, but it's always for the best to set your expectations as low as you can, because it's entirely possible this will be the first time so many players will try their luck at this newest weapon banner since the fate point system implementation, but you still need to consider the unforgiving nature of the pity system because of the high amount of wishes you need to use on the banner, so please consider this and your own well-being before trying your luck at the weapons banner. Thanks for watching and see you soon.